Um, all right, uh, Jen, I have a question for you as I see the, uh, the ER reports come through with the list of, of uh, folks. So do you presume that, um, or is it known that all of these people are, are positive with the initial screening test? No, no just so all, all these, sorry about the lines on my face. All these people though come in with COVID-like symptoms. COVID-like symptoms. like symptoms. Okay. They're all and tested. On that list, if you scroll through, it shows um, if they're vaccinated or not. Yes. About half good. of those are. Yeah. Um, but the ones that come through that are Greenfield, we get notified about trying to get away from this lines. Um, the other otherwise we are uh, um, there from other towns and we would not be notified. Okay, so the people that come through the ER, it's all comers. Yeah. Okay. And and well, it's uh, not we, all, they're most they're supposed to be Greenfield only, but sometimes a few come through that are not. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I was just unclear whether they had already been uh, confirmed to be uh, COVID positive or not, and the answer is no. But it doesn't say one way or the other. It's just Correct. that they have COVID-like symptoms. They're sus suspicious. Correct. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so. Let's uh, pick up where we left off. Um, I would like to uh, have a motion to bring back onto the table the uh, motion for a mask mandate. Anyone? Uh, Nancy, I think and maybe we could talk about this another time too, but I think you can make a motion because we're a board of under five people. Is that right? Did you find out something about uh, Robert's in, rules that I don't I believe know that in <laughs> that is going made yes, up yes. of less than five people, you can disregard the chair. Cannot, yeah. Okay, well, I move that we- This might make our uh, lives easier yeah. sometimes if you want to make a motion. <laughs> okay, uh, let's bring the mask mandate uh, back onto the table. Um, second. Either of you, Alyssa, second. All those in favor, yes. Okay. A, a procedural stuff. I, I should probably just uh, omit some of it, and in the future, I probably will. Um, all right. So um, I put together the entire motion, both from the, the motion and the amendment from last time, that the Board of Health mandates the wearing of face masks when inside any Greenfield building for individuals ages five and older and excluding those with exempt medical conditions. So that's where we stand. Nancy, um, if I could just make the suggestion briefly, you may want to, uh, for purposes of recording this, just who voted for what, how many voted affirmative, how many voted ne negative, and how many abstained, just for uh, rules of order. That's Dr. Oh. Beltran. Yeah. Okay, uh, it was a unanimous. It was unanimous. We do, we do that in the in the minutes. Yeah, that's where I'm going with that. It's just as long as we have it in the minutes, because other places I've worked, this has come up. Someone's did a FOIA and asked for that information, so I just trying to make sure we're covered. Oh, thank you, Wook. Um, is it Wook or Wook? There's a kilo on the end. Wook. <laughs> <laughs> Wook. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, it, thank you, uh, Alyssa, for pointing out it absolutely is in the minutes. Uh, who voted, you know, whether it was unanimous, who who made the motion, who seconded, whether it was unanimous or, you know, how it passed. So that's in our minutes. Thank you. Um, all right, conversation about where are we, I'll just open the, this uh, conversation by saying that a lot has changed uh, since we last met. And I'm, uh, um, no longer at all ambivalent about the need for this. The need is clear um, that we ought to have a, uh, a mask mandate for uh, indoor uh, indoor buildings of any kind, businesses, um, et cetera. And uh, so I don't have, you know, any uh, any questions about uh, passing the motion at this time. I think the the uh, what I would like to do, so Jen, this is a question for you. I think that the um, this motion can stand alone. We also have um, uh, we've heard from the the e EOC, the Emergency Operations Committee, um, and the mayor, and uh, that 
that, uh, and I totally agree with this, that outdoor um, gatherings of greater than 20 people should work should require we ought to mandate that they wear masks um, and that's that seems perfectly uh, reasonable to me at this time um, i think we can uh, add to this uh, we can uh, what i would suggest actually is we pass these one at a time um, so i would recommend that we t consider the motion that we currently have on the table um, and uh, complete that and then consider the, um, the mandate for outdoor gatherings of more than 20 people. Does that seem okay with folks? Okay. Um, are there, is there any further discussion about the motion? The mayor. The mayor is here. Yes. I, uh, I just joined because I had to be on the other meeting. Um, if you would read the motion again, please, I'd appreciate yes. it. The Board of Health mandates the wearing of face masks when inside any Greenfield building for individuals ages five and older and excluding those with exempt medical conditions. Danny has a question. Sorry, I, sorry. and it may seem obvious to us, but I just wanna make sure that the wording of the final vote is clear that it's not people inside their own homes. I, I know we all know this now, but I've been reading some of the orders and votes in other states and they, and they say things like inside any um, public building or public or private business. Uh, I am happy. Add some, you know, something like that. Yeah, Greenfield, uh... Any public or private building. I mean, I think we all know that you're not talking about right. inside right. houses, but just for right. clarification. Private okay. commercial. Pardon? I think private commercial would cover the, the thing that we're talking about. Um, private commercial. Um, well, I mean, I, it's it's up to, we can, if if reading the other, from the other towns, they would generally say public or private, and in parentheses, they would say things like, you know, uh, businesses, churches, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. it helps by way of definition. You don't have to add that. I think the final order needs to cover the gist of it. Yes. Kelly? Nancy? Yeah. I like the way that Amherst has theirs. Um, it just talks about wearing masks in all public and private indoor settings that are open to the public in the town of. Yeah, yeah I, 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 we'll second, some Kelly, I like, you know, this but, includes, yeah. but it's not limited to, and I think we could, if you wanted to get that specific, we could, but um, I think just kind of keeping it, you know, public and private indoor settings in the town of something like that might. Okay. So um, we cover a house party with a hundred people in the house. Um, this meeting is for, discussion is from questions from members of the board. He is that's Dr. Beltran. Okay. Uh, we're not we're not addressing more complicated um, questions right now. It's pretty complicated. I found your language for Amherst. Pardon. I found the language for Amherst, as Kelly pointed out, it is good. Board of Health adopted an order requiring the wearing of masks or face covering, coverings in all public indoor spaces and private indoor spaces that are open to the public in the town of Amherst. So that is pretty much everything that's a, a business, a church, also public buildings, but also privately owned businesses that are open to the public, but it doesn't really apply to humans' private houses if they have a family of 15. So I like that. Thank you. And this is just discussing indoor mask mandates right now? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, and my, well, I think we're just clarifying what we all know uh, this motion means. And I'm okay with um, putting the motion through as it is instead of continuing to add words and words and words. 
and then um, we can tweak the language so that it's uh, it's clear clear to the public. And now, is that okay? I mean, I'm just shooting from the seat of my pants here, but Danny says yes. <laughs> okay. All right, we we know what we mean. I love that language, uh, Nicole. I hope that you've uh, typed that along so that we can include it in the final reading here. All right, good. Any other discussion? All right, I'd like to ask for a vote then. All those in favor of the motion? Board of Health members. Okay, thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, ladies, for your patience with this long process uh, going back weeks. Um, all right, I would like to now consider uh, the suggestion about mask, a mask mandate for outdoor settings with greater than 20 people. Um, do I have a motion? First, let's get the motion on the table and then we'll discuss. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Alyssa, for permission for that. <laughs> I, I move that we, uh, it, um, that we, um, uh, that, that we institute a mask mandate, whatever language works, that we uh, institute a mask mandate for um, outdoor gatherings of greater than 20 people. Okay, do I have a second? Alyssa Kelly. I'd like to talk about it a little bit first. Well, the, um, the, the correct way to do it is get the motion on the table and then you talk. So we need we need to okay, get the, then I'll second the motion to discuss it. Yeah, that's right. Now discussion. Okay, we've got a second. Let's discuss. Yes. Um, I think could we have so Megan I, I, discuss. I, I'm sorry, Kelly. Can we have Megan discuss transmission? Because um, we have seen um, since we're doing contact tracing, the yes. transmission has been occurring, um, and how the spread is pretty rapid, um, indoors or outdoors. Megan, would you mind? I think the last month that we talked, we talked about um, a summer camp that was completely outdoors and we had three positive cases. And now I'm working up a case. It's a large cluster of an outdoor wedding. Um, I'm working with other towns on that one. Everything was outdoors. Everyone at the wedding was vaccinated and they're still positive. Mm. Yeah. So. All right. I mean, uh, are you, I mean, you're giving us information that is not surprising. And um, the question is, is 20 enough? Uh, should it be less, more? So far, we haven't been seeing spread in sports yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the 20 would cover it because you usually don't have more than 20 people on a field. So sports players wouldn't necessarily have to wear a mask. But that I think could change shortly as people start playing games. But I think as of today, we haven't seen that yet, but it doesn't mean it's not coming down the road. Thank you, Jen. The other reason I think it's of concern is people are gathering outside without masks currently and people don't necessarily social distance. Um, so I think that is why um, we're seeing um, certain spreads, more rapid spreads. Are we talking about events open to the public or private events outside as well? I think we're just, right now it's 20 people who are outside, right? Greater than 20 people yeah. who are outside. I think that's up to you guys, but right now we're just discussing the number. Yeah, I, I, I would prefer to just make a generic um, so that all people are aware, you know, uh, if, if I want to have 20 people in my backyard, I need to be aware, wait a minute here, or even 10 or 15 at this point, given what we're seeing. Um, probably that should go out in the newsletter, Jen, um, about, you know, what we've seen from summer camps, including that uh, uh, this wedding where everyone was vaccinated. Um, and nevertheless there were some cases from that so i would just make a generic any gathering within the city not that not that we haven't you know an enforcement arm in place but just that this is what 
we are asking of the public. We are asking that people wear masks if they're in a group outside of more than 20 people, wherever that might be. Does it, folks agree with that? I have a question, Bill. Um, where are we at with, uh, what, what is this? What? What, Kelly? Can't hear you. You're, you're, we can't hear you, Kelly. She's muted herself somehow. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm sorry. It's been a long you, week. You often um, <laughs> So, um, I just had a quick question. And I was going to play on the, um, the weekly DPH calls tomorrow, but um, where are we at from a state perspective? Is there any recommendations out there for outside gatherings or is it still? It's pretty, uh, there's nothing yet. And there's nothing from the sports. I didn't think so. I didn't think I had missed any. Nothing from the sports yet. Nothing from EEOC yet. Yeah, EEOC. But what I do think it would help with sports is even last year, um, it was more of the parents who were gathering outside on the stands yeah. or outside the hockey rink. So if we're having, it would just decrease the chances of clustering and people thinking they're vaccinated and they're outside. Um, I just think that mindset has to change a little bit um, that you should still wear your masks. Yeah. I think this is a tough one. Um, I think outside, like, you know, we, while we see some spread outside, our percent positivity rate in Greenfield is still quite low. Um, when you look at the past two weeks, we're still under 1% in our percent positivity rate. Um, you know, you all are the ones doing the contact tracing, so you know better than any of we, we do that, you know, whether those are those cases at a camp are from that camp or if they're from other events and like those three people happen to be at camp, you know, you, you all know that information better than we do, but I, I'm returned to looking at things like having restaurants operating at full capacity, requiring people to wear a mask while they walk to the bathroom, but sitting in there for an hour talking and eating and doing lots of things that we know spreads COVID. Um, meanwhile, asking people who are trying to just do the best they can and gather outside in their private residences. You know, it, it just, it's tough. It's a tough one. Um, I understand the, the impetus for the request and I, um, I still on the out, outside, I, you know, when it's a public event, for sure, that makes sense to me. Um, but in someone's private residence, it, it see, it feels like a tough call to make at this point. Okay. Jen? So when I was looking at the what I said last week, um, September 10th, yeah. So um, on Friday, we had 29 cases, and the average daily incident rate for Greenfield was 7.9, and Franklin County was 13.6, and the transmission in Massachusetts in general was 22.5. I'm looking at the percent positivity rate on the oh, right here on 0.78 and yep and it's 1.49 for Franklin County and 2.48 for Massachusetts and that was as of Friday. Yeah, if you look at the date, so it's not now. Um, and if you could look sure. at my numbers from Friday, we had 29 and now we have 48. So I'm sure that number has changed. Mayor and Meg, just I would just remind you. I would just remind you that you just uh, recommended a mask mandate that did not include families gathering together, private families in their private residence. So if you get, uh, you know, a family might be only a family of six, but they have cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents. 
uh, extended family, etc., so forth and so on. So uh, it seems at odds to make an outdoor, as Alyssa says, and I, I, I agree with her point of view um, personally, um, it makes, uh, you know, to uh, have an indoor one that doesn't apply and an outdoor one that does. I, I think you're asking the community to believe uh, two different things and comply with two different things. And yeah, and to add to that, I think it, we have to be really careful with our messaging. Um, this, like, like we talked about last time, this is here to stay with testing. I mean, there are a lot of things that are beyond our control. Why at home, you know, antigen testing isn't more widely available um, and accessible to people in this country is, I don't know, but that's not something that we can control on this level. But like our messaging around how to stay safe and how to manage something that's like becoming endemic um, in terms of like, yeah, go get tested, get tested frequently, do these things smartly, do these things safely, wear a mask when you're inside or, um, you know, obviously on public transit, that's been a, that's been a mandate for the whole time we've been in this thing, basically. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And at the same time, I think we have to be really careful with our messaging and, and, you know, it's really easy to say if, if I can't see my friends and family outside of my own house, and I, even if I'm vaccinated, even if I'm getting tested, even if I'm wearing a mask when I go to the grocery store, why do I do any of these other things? I should just do nothing. And I know that's not a line of thinking any of us like or like buy into, but, you know, our people's mental health is 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 really fragile right now. <laughs> Everyone feels like they're about to snap for one reason or another, and I just think we want to be really thoughtful and and not contradict ourselves. Um, what about this? If we if we mandate uh, the wearing of masks for public gatherings or uh, gatherings in public settings greater than 20 people and encourage it in private settings. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, so, so I'm gonna just uh, give a little personal note here. My daughter and my son-in-law have COVID. My son-in-law was at a wedding. I don't know if it's the same wedding we're talking about. Um, Let's see, last, what, what's today is, so a week ago, like 10 days ago on a Saturday, was exposed there. I think, I don't know the vaccination rate of people. There were five people that came away from that positive, including my son-in-law and now my daughter and his brother. So I've got a lot of COVID going on in, <laughs> south of here in my family. So. Little little personal note. Yes, Jen. I think that we should keep in mind that the president made stricter um, guidelines for vaccination, and and um, with federal employees and anything that gets federal dollars. I think we need to keep in mind that the president of the United States is noting um, that there's an increase, and I think that we're seeing a steady increase. And I understand that people's mental health is at stake, being in public health. You know, Megan and myself are very acutely aware of that. However, we are not going to lower and slow the spread unless we take multiple steps um, to to slow the spread. I feel that um, it's been clear that with more lax behavior, we have seen the numbers steadily increase. We have seen that as people's numbers uh I should say titers for the boot, the vaccine have gone down. We've seen numbers increase. There's no boosters in sight for a lot of people in Franklin County who got Moderna more than Pfizer. I think that having multiple uh, steps to decrease the threat um, and, and the severity of COVID going around 
as well as different variants that are around as well that are making people sicker, I think the better. I think the more we procrastinate just for the, set, the, the, the mental health of a lot of people, and it's everybody, it's a lot of discouragement and a lot of frustration. But we got to remember people are getting sicker and we have numbers to back this up. The president is noticing this. People are dying. I mean, yes, vaccinated people aren't dying as high as people that are not vaccinated. But we're seeing vaccinated people intubated and sick. So I understand that we have to be aware of people's mental status. But I think we really need to be aware that the spread is real. It's growing quickly and trying to follow all these cases, even if people are doing the right thing, wearing their mask, but they're outside thinking they're safe. We're seeing a spread. I think that it's something to consider. I think as you've seen, Nancy, your family's affected. Yeah, that was an outdoor wedding. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know there were parties that firefighters, fire, firefighters were out that their family members are positive. So I think that we need to be aware of this and really consider this. I'm not saying everybody has to lock down. I'm not saying about restaurants. I don't want that. I want businesses to succeed and everything. But I do feel that in gatherings where people are around each other a lot, we're seeing an increase in transmission. And I think Megan would agree to that. Sure. And I think we need to be careful around saying that people are doing the right or the wrong thing. We, I want to go back to Correct. like remembering the HIV epidemic. You didn't do something wrong if you got COVID. It's a thing that happens. It doesn't discriminate. Like if you get COVID, Correct. it, you know, it doesn't make you bad or like you did anything wrong. Um, and the other thing that I'll say is, I'm also not, you know, like we don't have much, we don't, I'm not interested in any jurisdiction over restaurants. I'm simply pointing out the risk difference between being in a restaurant for an hour and being outside your house with your, a party of 20. Like that's a, that's a legitimate risk difference. So Sometimes when we feel scared and anxious, these things are really real because we're watching, you know, people get sick. Like we have strong reactions, but we we're on, we're mitigating in certain places and and not in others. So I I just the way we frame it and the way we talk about it almost right now it, more than what we're not more than what we're doing, but in addition to what we're, is just as important as like what we're actually mandating and like reassuring people that like, although yes, you can get sick while you're vaccinated, like the people who are vaccinated and intubated are not this, it's like when you look at those populations and like, there are a lot of things to take into account beyond vaccines and masking practices. There are like, other health conditions, there are age conditions, there are people who are likely to already be very careful about COVID and people who are not. Like, there are a lot of different mitigating factors. So it's, I just want us to remind us that it can be easy to reduce some of these numbers down to like very black and white things and none of it is that black and white, which is why I think it's so difficult and really important to have a careful conversation and be really careful with the words we choose. Um, all right. I I would suggest we uh, that that we have a vote on. Uh, See, Kelly has a question. Nancy, yes, Kelly's sorry. Hard. Actually, yeah. more of a comment. I um, I, I I agree with with what's been discussed here, especially with what Alyssa is saying about the messaging and the way we present it. And so one of the things I've been thinking about is, you know, even with this um, the previous motion for the the indoor mask mandate, we started with a recommendation. And maybe I, I know timing is everything, but maybe that's what we start with with here. Maybe we make a recommendation that people at least kind of think about it, think about their like what their plans are and and how they how they want to go about you know the the next couple of weeks in their life and what mm -hmm. they're doing, and just have them at least thinking about that and make the recommendation that it, that you know they try to minimize it to a certain number or whatnot, but do it as a recommendation versus a mandate um and start there and hmm. uh 
Okay. Just a thought. I don't have an, an objection to that of making it a recommendation for gatherings of greater than 20 people. Start there and, and uh, upgrade. I agree. I think that's a really good idea, Kelly. And it keeps our messaging consistent too, because that's what we did with the indoor piece of it for public yeah, spaces. So. It's true. Um, okay, so, so yeah. Is it possible that um, whatever the agreements are today, whatever the board votes, that we can check back every 30 days or as uh, the nurse would recommend or myself if the numbers are gr growing? Yes. Just because I think that this could be something more fluid, that it's not set in stone, and that if the public knows that we're going to be reviewing this frequently, it maybe won't feel as harsh. Okay. Yeah, the review 30 days sounds good. Or, or as needed. As needed, yeah. At least 30 days. Mayor? That was my thought too. I believe I recommended that in the yeah. comment about different things. And I I, I think it is it, it could go both ways, frankly. The numbers could begin to come down as well. So it's not just because they increase, it's because they could be coming down. Um okay so we have a motion on the table it sounds like we we might want to vote that one down and uh and do a recommendation instead that's what i'm hearing um so i'm i'm going to suggest we vote this uh uh this motion down and and start with uh, a recommendation it seems like that's where we're at as a board and that's okay with me um okay so all those in favor of the the motion to mandate mask wearing for outdoor gatherings. All those opposed. Okay, opposed. So, opposed. <laughs> opposed. opposed. So we're voting that one down. Okay, so so um a motion to uh recommend the wearing of face masks for all gatherings of more than 20 people. Um and the only question is is it public or private? or just all gatherings and just leave it at that. Thoughts? I, I would still say public. You would like to make it public, public gatherings? Like public gatherings. Outdoor. Out, outdoor. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, public outdoor gatherings. Okay, that sounds good. All right, public Good outdoor question. gatherings recommended. So if um, someone's yeah. having a party in a park, is that considered public or private? It's private, even if it's on public land, I would say. If I, you know, if I go over to the Green River with my, you know, 20 family members and we've rented a picnic table, that's 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 still a private gathering. If it's uh, watching a hockey game, uh, not a hockey game, a football game, and that's outdoors, that's public. Different. Fair enough? All right. Um, all right, so the motion is uh, for the recommendation of uh, face masks for public outdoor gatherings of greater than 20 people. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'll put the motion on the table. Second, I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, Aye. motion carries. All right. Um, I think that the 30 day, I'm just going to say that the, 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 the reviewing of mask requirements, um, as the mayor indicated, uh, I would say at least 30 days or sooner and as needed. And I don't think we need a motion. I think we can put that language in and, and uh, I think that's satisfactory. Okay. Um, so, is there anything else about uh, COVID or can we move on? 
All right, we have uh, quite a number of things here. Um, all right, we can have I make a recommendation. Minutes. Pardon? Could we, could we maybe just skip down to number 11? Yeah. Yes. Yes, let's do. So we get these um, approvals taken care of. Um, Jen, you want to offer that? Uh, what this is here? Oh, sure. So um, the health department has um, two new faces uh, joining us. One is um, the physician oversight, which is Dr. Beltran, who's in this meeting. Um, and we needed the board's approval for him as well as uh, our new health inspector, Ruben Arroyo. Um, we would need approval. I think he may be phoned in on this meeting. Um, and then I just have one other person. I'm just giving a big uh, thank you to. She's on this meeting, uh, is Jennifer Facey. She has been doing uh, senior tax work off with us and she has organized our files like and our our title five i mean every it's been amazing and we would have not been able to do that without her um so she is amazing and the uh, health department is extremely grateful for all the work and time she's put in but um for for board approval it's for dr beltran and uh ruben arroyo uh and for those of you who don't know, Dr. Beltran is a volunteer um, for us, which we greatly appreciate. We need help with uh, ordering of vaccines, which I can't do even though I've got the MD because I don't have a current license. You have to have a license. Um, and uh, and there's other, uh, other un, uh, you know, foreseen um, functions that Dr. Beltran will be helpful in. And I wanna, Thank him very much for his willingness to do this volunteer work. Um, and uh, so that I think that's all I have to say. So we're just looking for. Um, I guess we need an, a formal motion that you're looking for Jen. Correct. For okay, let's take 1 at a time. Ruben Arroyo. Is I Ruben present on the call? I don't know if he's here. Yeah, he should be. Well, yeah, I don't know. I helped him. He had to call and he couldn't use the link. He should be here somewhere. I see two call ins. He might not know how to unmute. It's it's sort of tricky on the phone. True. He so said he can here. he said he can hear. Okay. So Ruben is here. Okay. Um so I move that we approve uh, Ruben Arroyo as our new health inspector. Second. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Okay. Jim carries. Thank you, Ruben. Congratulations for being. Ruben, you have been amazing so far, and we are very grateful, and we welcome you to the health department. Thank you. Yes, very, very definitely. Help is needed, and you have arrived. Thank you. Um, Dr. and for Dr. Beltran, I move that we approve Dr. Beltran uh, for the volunteer physician role. Uh, someone's unmuted. Uh, I'll second that motion. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Now, do you have the list that they're going down? So you know where they're at? JJ, you need to unmute yourself. Thank All you. right, great. We got that one taken care of. So, um, what's uh, what's the next most important thing to take care of here, Jen? Um, I think that the next most important thing to talk talk about is our um, uh, uh, septic review, and then is the is the person who is appealing for smoke heaven on? I'm guessing now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. So the septic review. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nicole, you want to present the first one, three fifty nine Colerain Road. 
Sure. Okay. So 359 Colerain Road, I went to the original Title V inspection um, with Bosley Sanitary Services and they failed it. Um, the level of um, sludge was way over the outlet um, line. So he failed it, which I felt comfortable with him failing it, but the homeowner did not. Um, so she wanted to seek um, a second opinion. Um, so the second person that came out was Tom Loya. Um, you've seen his letter about the system. He also failed it, but he's doing it in, in a different way than an engineer would normally do it. Normally an engineer would redo the entire system. So he wants to basically do it backwards. So he's gonna leave like the D box and the tank and stuff. And he's gonna dig up the leach field, which is where mm. the water is puddling. Um, it's not something that normally somebody would do, but that's why we're asking for your approval. If you guys feel like that's something that's okay. Yeah, from what I understand reading this, the, um, he, the, the, uh, uh, the clean out box, seem to be fine the you know and 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 the uh uh you know the apparatus connected to the to the uh clean out box all that seemed to find the problem was after which is why he's recommending the the leach field um cleaning and that makes sense to me i mean what little i know um Nicole, you seem to be comfortable with it. You've, you've had the most training, I think, of anybody here on that. And you seem to think that makes sense. It makes sense to me. I've never been confronted with this situation before. So um, I don't know. I've never had somebody like deny a failed system. So yeah, has he, has this um, engineer remediated a similar problem in this way before or is this a new uh not that i'm aware of not since i've been here um actually both of these items on this agenda are from him so i don't really know they usually do not um do leach fields uh, last and as a matter of fact, right. uh, the health department that when we do a title five, it is not in when we observe, we don't have to look at the leach field. The health department's role is to look up into the D box, which then distributes the water out to the leach field. So she's having problems with her D box where it's backing up in this sludge and then there's puddling in the leach field. So obviously there's a problem in that region. So that's why he's going to look and see if there's issues with the leach field proper um, to see maybe there's stone or something blocking the exits of the holes that are in the tubing for the leach field. So Jennifer, does it make sense to you? I think I, I have not heard of anyone do that. I think it does make sense logically. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying it. Um, but it could cost them more money in the long run, though. Like that isn't the that's, issue, but that's not really our problem. Yeah, that's right. But if, she, if this is what she wants to do, if this yes. is what she's a lot, you know, and, well, and it's you know, is that what she said? I mean, here's the proposal. Did she say she would accept this proposal if we did? Or yeah, I actually talked to her on the phone the other day because she was asking when she would find out if we accepted it. Um, you know, once the once he theoretically repairs the leach field, it'll be clear whether it would pass the Title V or not at that point. Right. I mean, it, so to me, it seems like it's okay to go backwards. But I have one question for you, Jennifer. Why is it that that uh, Title V inspections don't inspect the leach field. Why would that be? I think it's just looking at this, the, the soil when it goes through the soil for purification, that is just separate. We have to just look at the mechanical aspect. So how the water comes out of the house or sewage comes out of the house. So we look at the tubing that way. 
what's attached from inside to that tubing outside. Yeah. The, the actual tank itself. Yeah. And the holding tank and then yeah. the D box. Yeah. So we make make sure everything's structurally okay. And then you could assume based on what the D box is doing, what's going on downstream. We uh, can is, evaluate the field, but that's not in necessarily in our purview. Yeah. Uh, She's it, not going to be able to have another Title V inspection for another year, year because it would take that long for it to repool. But I thought there was some urgency about this. Yeah, there was like 30 inches of scum on top of her tank. Oh, that was the urgency. Mm -hmm. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, OK. All right. Um, D boxes. What's the difference between the holding tank and the what's the D box? The D box is the distribution, the distribution tank, distribution. and that usually yeah. has three to. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Got it. OK. AJ just wrote down that the urgency is selling her house. Yeah, that's what I thought. But you can, but it's got to have a title. Uh, um, title, title, five five has to pass. title five has to pass, and we can't do another one. Or she can't have another one for you said a year Correct. after the leach field. So I I don't know how that's going to work. But I have no objection to to this. Do either of the other uh, members have okay? So I don't have an objection. I just want to make sure that the homeowner knows that you do need a passing title that's five. just all clear that you need yeah, a passing need title, five. title five to sell a house so i'm not quite sure how this is going to help so we'd have to wait about a year in order to get another title five before the house can go up for sale unless there's an agreement i guess between the potential buyer and her but uh, I don't know. Yeah, That's I don't separate. Know real, I don't know yeah, the real um, estate laws. Well, you can that. you can sell a home as is. Um, mm. So basically, if there is an issue after the new homeowner would have to pay for that. Is is uh, the homeowner aware though that the one year uh, period that we're talking about is she cognizant? She's, of that? Yeah, she okay. just texting. Yeah. She said, yes, that's fine. All right. Okay. I have no objections In to the chat. The yeah. Anybody um, else? Oh, and she's saying that the D, the D box will be replaced as well. So that'll be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't have any objections. Alyssa, you're okay with it, Kelly. Are you okay? Yep. I have no objections. Yep. <laughs> I think okay. it's worth a shot as long as the the homeowner is willing to, yeah. And this gentleman is willing to, and okay. you know, good. Okay. All right. Um. So that one's taken care of. The next one is. Uh, we have ten minutes left, by the way. Thank you very much for keeping track of the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's let's deal with uh, uh, Mohawk Trail. Okay, Nicole. Uh yeah same process so backwards engineering um because when they put the system in there was a couple glitches with the previous owner he didn't do things correctly so they never figured out how big the leach field was so basically what mr loya is going to have to do is reperk it and try to figure out the gallons per day um, so he's basically going to do it backwards. He's going to do a perk test next to the leach field where the system already is. Uh, and the two, the 2000 gallon tank septic, uh, the 2000 gallon tank is, would actually accommodate, uh, it says this would be the maximum the 2000 gallon tank could accommodate. So I thought the question was, oh, I see. And the leach field also has to accommodate. Correct. Groups. Got it. That's the problem. Okay. I, for some reason, thought it was the tank. Okay. So I, I don't understand how you can, uh, I, I understand the concept of reverse engineering, but it, I mean, you have a piece of land out there. How do you, how can you figure out just by perk testing how big the leach field is? 
it has to do with the rate of flow through the soil. I'm not a certified certified yeah. soil evaluator, so I don't I don't know. Um, but I know that they look at the soil, figure out if it's sandy, figure out if it's loamy, and like they dig two perk holes and they put water in it and they measure it on their watch and stuff and they have a, yeah. So what they what he will do then is based on the perk test, he will infer what size leach field was was put in there in 1989. Yeah. That will infer that based on the um and then it said something about uh that it needs to meet current code. So they'll assume based on 1989 what the size of that leach field is and then look forward and say is this acceptable for current code? Do I have that right? Yes. Nicole, thank you. All right. Um, I'm also okay with this one. Gals on the board. Kelly. I mean, it's okay. logically it, it yeah. seems okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not being in being outside of my field of expertise a little bit here, but Yeah, I'm a little out of my my uh, expertise here too. <laughs> I think we all are. All right. I think, I, I think as long as the homeowner is aware that the expectation is that this is our, our effort to, you know, an effort to try and back engineer. Yeah, the because the only other way to do it would be to build something a new thing, you know, that yeah. may or may not work, so, but great. this is acceptable to me. Sounds like you guys are okay. All right, they'll get back to us. Okay, um, let's see, we have five minutes. We have not much time. What's uh, most pressing, Nicole, Jennifer? Could I uh, give the sanitation problem update really quick? Okay. So um, I was reached out today by, uh, and which is very quick, so Christy Moore needed to know why there was no lock on the porta potty at Energy Park. Uh, Representative Paul Mark will be at Energy Park um, this coming weekend. Um, at the same time, I was reached, uh, Walt from Carson's Cans reached out to me stating that there is no lock at Energy Park and that once again, that porta potty was uh, again filled with needles and it was dirty and there was trash. He then followed up with me asking about what's going on with the Olive Street port porta potty, which is near the garage. Um, he said that he was told there would be a trash can there. I was not involved with the installation of the porta potty. That was between him and MJ uh, because of uh, the City Hall Square uh, thing, and they had a porta potty added there. So I uh, followed up, and he said in the porta potty at Olive Street, that is never locked. There were uh, three hypodermic needles in the urinal, which one of the workers almost got stuck by. Um, there were hypodermic needles within the toilet, and there was trash all around because there's no trash can. People were just throwing trash and bags of trash in the porta potty. I had three messages on my voicemail this weekend for the Olive Street porta potty. Um, so I emailed um, pretty much everybody Christy, Marlo, uh, MJ, saying what's going on. Uh, the agreement we made with Walt from Carson's Cans was that we were going to keep things locked and keep it clean and keep the needles down. Um, so I am waiting to hear back regarding that, but that happened today. But on that, um, there was a discussion of the Portland Lou, um, which was a recommendation. And uh, I sent out a little handout to Nancy. I have other copies for the board. I just didn't see you guys. Um, and um, it's a structure where it's hooked directly up to the uh, sewer and um, it cleans and there's slats where it gives some privacy, but not that much. There's blue light, so it's difficult to inject veins um, and it costs about $200,000 um, per unit. Um, and that means for delivery from Portland, Oregon to installation here. It's also graffiti proof and vandalism proof and a lot of stuff. But Nancy wanted me to give a little bit of an overview. Yeah, thank you. That. Got the, yeah. Yeah, it seem, seems like a wonderful solution. 
yeah, I, I'd like to throw the, the support of the Board of Health behind that one. Can we put Sharps containers? The problem in the porta potties is they're too small, and that's why they can't put them inside. But there are sharp containers right next door to the porta potty at Energy Park. Um, but people still throw their needles in the potty itself. And Tapestry, I, I work with them to have needle collection. Um, there's also a hotline that Tapestry is setting up so the police don't get called to pick up needles on the street. Um, so I've been working with them. And we're adding more uh, sharps containers around the city in general. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Um, I think it's uh, it's six o'clock. So um, I just want to, uh, we have one minute for uh, any public comment. Okay. Um, so the uh, remainder of the items will be uh, at the next meeting, I do not, uh, I'm not going to be here October, the first Monday in October. So I'd like to set up a regular or month, regular monthly meeting for October 11th, which is uh, Columbus Day. Is that workable for um, Kelly, you and for you, Alyssa? It is a hol. I don't know. Is it a holiday for us, Nicole? Let me look. I think it's an indigenous it's people's people's day. holiday. That's the problem with having Monday meetings is we keep running into holidays. We, we also do have one comment that we might just want to note for next meeting um, about being in touch with DEP about decibel monitoring for Jim's yeah. tree service. Yeah. In the chat there. Yeah. Uh, Nancy, do you want me to answer it? Do you want to answer it? Uh, yeah, you answer. Um, I reached out to uh, the state. Nancy's aware. Um, and he stated that um, that they will not come out and put a temporary um, piece of equipment there um, and that they would have to <clears throat> come and visit um, and do inspections if needed. Um, again, he referred everybody uh, that has issue to zoning. I did uh, send uh, Eric Twarg's information to Mr. Minor. Um, he offered to speak with them, but it is a zoning issue um, uh, since there is already uh, something that went up to the planning board regarding the equipment that Jim's Tree Service uses. And even though that big chipper was big, um, it is allowed according to that agreement. So if there's an issue, it has to go back to zoning. That's from the state. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, regarding the next meeting, it is a holiday. Um, we could also do instead of Monday, how about Wednesday, October 6th? How's that for folks? Wednesday. Okay. So I would like to personally, I'd like to switch the meeting to a Wednesday. Jennifer, you know, we yeah. put it on Monday because to be in, I don't know, before the town council meeting, but yeah. it doesn't seem to really matter. Any chance we can uh, have the first Wednesday in October? October 6th, I'm fine with it, but we have to make a quick vote because we have to get off. Okay. Okay, great. We can do All the 6th. Right. Thank 5 you. 5 p.m.? Yes, yeah. 5 p.m. Okay. We'll let you know if the room's available on October 6th. Okay. Great, thank you. I think we're, we're all set. Uh, Let's adjourn the meeting, motion to adjourn and all of that. One second. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See you next time.